That's how, we're passionate people. I, I feel like when I was in, let's not say university, I think high school, mm. I would go back and look over, you know, essays and things like that and be like, okay, so I, I get that I'm very passionate as, you know, most people that know me know, but it can't always reflect in my writing, you know, like I'm, yeah, I'm going to yeah. get this essay back from my teacher. That's like, you can't put three exclamation marks after every sentence. <laughs> well, I'll go back through my emails and then I'll have to pick and choose which sentences I, I have to delete exclamation points off of to tone my <laughs> message. Down. I'm a passionate guy. What can I say? I We're so yeah. similar. You have your mug back. I have my mug back. Thank you, Coach Val. Uh, yes, uh, for those that don't know, I I broke my mug hand washing it because I didn't want to put it in the dishwasher, uh, and it was hard. The muscles. <laughs> yeah. Just took the handle, clear off the mug. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It happened. But here we are. It's back. Hopefully, this one is a, a little stronger, and and maybe we'll just use the dishwasher now. We're going to be extra cautious with this one. Yes. Extra cautious. Um, extra cautious. So I love this topic. I, I, when you messaged me earlier, I was like, "Yep, on it. Let's do it." This is a this is a big one for people. This is uh, mm -hmm. this is important, right? Um, yeah. So so talking sugar today, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people. First of all, I mean, we should distinguish uh, uh, a lot of. There's a lot of things to peel back here, like sugar versus carbohydrates versus naturally occurring versus. Uh, added all of these things and these are things that I think a lot of people um, they don't want to acknowledge people don't want to acknowledge that they're addicted to sugar they think that they're in control uh, morning Michelle good morning Boris uh, morning, guys. listen this is for people this is very real so this is an important discussion and you know in my in my honest opinion not to scary one but this can get very dangerous mm -hmm. right this can if you don't get this under control and i think a lot of people will um they don't want to to acknowledge to themselves they don't want to uh acknowledge and honor their truth is that they are currently addicted to sugar and it is addicting right yeah and and you could very well have been addicted to sugar since you know you were a very very small child depending on right. How, how you were raised, right? So we're not here to play the blame game. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes there is this, this lack of awareness, but then on the other side of the spectrum, I've worked with, you know, hundreds of clients who have said, you know what, like my sugar cravings are super, super real. Um, and, you know, a lot of women especially find that they do get increased cravings um, around the time of their cycle too. So, you know, we want to kind of, Right. So we want to kind of um, bring bring this subject to light. And if you or anyone that, you know, is really kind of feeling stuck in this sugar addiction, which is like Coach Divorce said, kind of a scary thing. Let's let's take a look at it. Let's give you some tools, because uh, no matter how stuck you feel, there is a way to crave sugar exponentially less if at all mm -hmm. um so so there is hope <laughs> so i wanted, yeah like I, I just wanted to ask you a couple of um questions this morning and and hopefully people will find this helpful so first of all you know for anybody out there who's saying you know okay like I know that I love sugar but I just feel like it's a lack of willpower or whatever that looks like are sugar cravings and car craving, carb cravings a real thing? A hundred percent they are. Absolutely. They're, they're, uh, they are real as well as uh, emotional eating is mm -hmm. very real as well. Listen, there's a lot of factors that go in here. This is going to be something I know we're not going to, we're not going to solve this in this one hour. That's why our, our, our program is 90 days. Right? right, because it's going to create realizations around this, but we cover a lot of information in 90 days and create awareness around this. And I think right. today is going to be a great start for people to create awareness around this. That yes, this is a real thing. Emotional eating is a real thing. Stress eating is a real thing. Um, and guess what happens when you are uh, emotionally eating or stress eating? Uh, you will have a ten higher tendency to crave high sugar, high fat foods. Right. Right. 
Right. And for those of you who don't know, because yes, we know that foods that are high in carb or high in sugar are what we refer to as highly palatable. So they make our taste buds sing. They're very, very easy to go to because they taste um, so euphoric. So can you kind of break down what happens to people when you consume something like a high sugar food? Why is it that when we're consuming these throughout the day on a regular basis, why is it even though we know, because let's be honest, you know that it's probably not something you should be eating. Why are these foods so addictive? Why do we keep going back to them, um, which obviously inevitably keeps us craving these foods? Yeah, so uh, so first of all, you're absolutely right. They, when you consume these foods, these highly palatable foods, um, you're, you're essentially stimulating the pleasure center of the brain. Right. Right. So then we, we start to get into the physiologic response here, which is the dopamine response. And this is super interesting. There were some studies done on... Uh, it was either mice or rats, and forgive me, don't no one no one go back and butcher me over the the <laughs> wrong rodent species that we selected in these studies. But um, they did these studies on mice where they added sugar into the water, and the mice would go back and uh, they would just drink this sugar water excessively, right? right. And um, they they actually did some research that shows that it would stimulate the same uh, uh, places in the brain, the same parts of the brain as I believe uh, cocaine would, cocaine, right? So yeah. highly addictive. Uh, but here, there's some really interesting stuff. It goes, it's multifactorial, right? So it right. goes beyond just the taste because taste is a factor. Obviously, stuff with high sugar is going to taste better. This is a survival mechanism in, you know, we'll, we'll seek out these foods um, to have short bursts of energy in times of need. So right. obviously our genetics would evolve to make these foods, like you said, hyper palatable so that we will crave these foods for our survival. Right, right. now in our modern society, we have an abundance of calories and abundance of food available to us. So this is actually working against us, that hyper palatable, um, uh, the craving of the sugar, the want for that taste, the pleasureful aspect of that. Right. Now, can we, let's get into some interesting stuff that they did on these follow-up studies with these mice that, that just blew my mind that I think people need to understand is, yeah. Uh, another group of researchers looked at these mice and said, yeah, but this is not a natural environment for mice to be in, to be locked up in this cage. So what if we created uh, more of a, um, a fun aspect to these mice and if we challenged them and created mazes and made it like a, like a playground for mice, guess what happened? they stopped drinking as much of the sugar water as the other mice that were in this really depressed, stressed state, right? Right. So now we're bringing in the psychological components. So do you see how this can get a little more complex? I'll give you one more. Let's talk about the dopamine response, right? So dopamine is uh, our reward uh, neurotransmitters. The chemical in our body, when we when dopamine is released, it's it's pleasure, it's reward, it's drive. Right. Um, this becomes exceptionally powerful in the absence of another neurotransmitter ca called serotonin, which is our happy neurotransmitter. Right. So think about this: if you have low serotonin levels then dopamine becomes more important because if you have low serotonin, you're less likely to be happy. You're more likely to be stressed and anxious and depressed. So chasing that reward, that dopamine hit becomes more powerful of a response in the body, right? Right. Here's the interesting one. Another study in which they took out the genetic factor in these rodents for taste, so they couldn't taste, they still overconsume the sugar water because of the dopamine response they right. receive. 
Right. Right. So you have so, the, the point is you have so many factors that are working against you when it comes to sugar and right. the food industry knows this. Yeah. So they add sugar to everything. Well, that's something I was going to say for those people who don't know. I mean, there are full-time jobs and departments in companies where people come together and they figure out how to make a consumable taste so good that you will become addicted to it. They do these in fast food restaurants. They do this in, in other products that you can buy at the grocery store. So even just having that awareness that someone's full-time job is to make this product as addictive as possible. And as Coach DeVore will tell you, for as many years of working in the supplement industry, um, there are a lot of people out there that are doing the best with the information that they have. So now I just want to kind of get into um, asking you a few questions about natural sugar versus added sugar, because I've heard this time and time again where people say, okay, and yes, a huge part of our program is consuming foods as close to nature as possible. So um, honey comes from nature, maple syrup comes from nature, uh, there are other you know, high carb grains that, that come from nature. But when we're talking about weight loss, when we're talking about hormonal balance, is there a difference between consuming maple syrup and white table sugar? And what do companies or what can companies or have they done uh, in order to trick, and I'm going to use that word, consumers into buying a product because they think that it's being sweetened with more natural types of sugar? Wow, so there's a lot to unpack there. So there is. Okay, there, there's like five <laughs> questions in there. So I'm going to try and answer them all. Um, but yeah, we got to be real careful with labels. Okay. So, um, you know, companies are out the, the profit motive, the motive to create money for their employees and their shareholders is a very powerful driver and i'm going to say in most cases is a much pow more powerful driver than doing what's best for the consumer's health right 100 right if you want to if you want to create a successful company you have to drive sales and how do you drive sales well you make things taste better and you make people want to consume more of it right. so i would hazard to guess and based on my experience, there are very few food companies out there that are sitting around the table saying, you know, let's reduce the amount of, or let's not add any sugar into this, um, even though that sugar is going to extend the shelf life of this product and make it more hyper palatable and, mm -hmm. trick, and trick the consumer's body into consuming more of it because right. it's actually going to potentially blunt the the signal for uh, satiety for feeling full mm -hmm. um, let, let's let's not do any of that stuff let's just uh, do what's best for the consumer's health right very it's few not. companies <laughs> if in, in that. I think listen I in all of fairness I think a lot of companies start out wanting to do what's in the best interest of the consumer Agreed. And then eventually over time, they realize it's really tough to compete doing that. It's really tough to make money. It's tough to profit doing that, right? Absolutely. So, um, so then they start to creep towards the dark side. And the reality is, is that there is very little regulation going on. There is no governing body walking around picking up random foods off the shelf and testing them and saying, and I, th I don't even know if that's possible to distinguish between the types of sugar that companies are adding in. And companies, I'm telling you, I know this firsthand, will get really creative working within the legal guidelines of what they're allowed to put on a label. Is it always ethical? I'm going to say no. But by the letter of the law, they're technically not doing anything wrong. Right. right. So we can get real creative. There's a lot of leeway with uh, with what they can do on labels, right? Raw organic cane sugar versus just sugar, right? Yes. So yeah. it's 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 having the awareness to know that sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar, right? So so 
let's let try that. I'm like, oh, you're so excited. I'm like, go ahead. Oh, well, but, but, but listen, that's not even always the case, right? A calorie is not a calorie. Uh, sugars are not all treated the same in the body. True. Okay. So um, uh, let's talk about uh, fructose, for example. Right. Um, so fructose is uh, one of those unique sugars that can be potentially uh, dangerous to your health. It can be because of the way fructose is metabolized. It actually skips a rate limiting step in the metabolism of carbohydrates in our energy metabolism. And it, it basically has no shut off mechanism. You can right. over consume sugar. Uh, you can over consume fructose very easily. And also fructose is more likely to get shuttled into the liver and be converted into uh, essentially a stored fat and over consumption of fructose is one of the greatest offenders or causes of what's called fatty liver disease. A lot right. of individuals don't know that, right? So can it's you give some simple. examples of products that have fructose? Um, you can find, well, well obviously fruits have right. fructose. So this is where things get interesting. Um, you know, we're not anti-fruit in the program, definitely not, but no. we do teach individuals about how, when, and how much fruit you should be likely eating. My personal opinion, I don't think the overconsumption of fruit is ideal for optimal health. I think some fruit is great. And, and again, we don't want to demonize fruit because there are a lot of good aspects of fruit, including the naturally occurring sugars, which also are accompanied by uh, micronutrients and fibers that are going to... Yes. Exactly, that are not just going to slow down the digestion of that sugar to prevent some of the nasty effects of happening, but also contribute to uh, micronutrient content. As we know, micronutrients are super important to unlock the potential stored energy of food. Right. Um, and one of my favorite sayings is uh, now, and I wish I can remember who said this, but we don't have, um, we're, or sorry, we're overfed and undernourished. Okay, right. so we don't have an issue with not consuming enough calories, but we do have uh, an issue with not enough micronutrients in our food, and micronutrients are critical for optimal health. For example, if you're lacking certain B vitamins and magnesium, I'm gonna pick on those because those are critically important, again, for carbohydrate metabolism. If those aren't present in adequate amounts in the body, in your diet, and many of these we must consume exogenously from, from outside sources, you're simply not going to metabolize those carbohydrates properly. And again, they're going to be shuttled and stored into body fat. Right. So for example, let's say somebody in the morning is you know you wake up and you're we've all been there you wake up and you're at your most motivated in the morning and you said okay so today is going to be the day that i'm going to you know cut sugar out of my diet or reduce sugar i'm wanting to lose weight balance my hormones sleep better whatever that looks like for you and they start their morning off with a uh, coffee that has any type of sugar in it so let's say it has either table sugar or maybe you're using honey or you're using maple syrup or you're using something to help sweeten that coffee. Um, and that's the first thing that you're putting into your body. Can you give our viewers an idea of maybe why that's not such a great idea and how that's kind of setting you up for that first meal effect throughout the rest of the day and how that can affect um, the cravings throughout the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's something called the first meal effect that we see. And whatever you consume first in the day is going to set up a series of enzymatic reactions in the body that's going to kind of set the tone for the rest of the day, right? Right. But the other thing is, too, is um, what we're trying to achieve and a huge critical aspect of hormonal balance is really that you can control with food is controlling your insulin response to food. That's a big, big deal. Um, and consuming sugars on their own, specifically fast digesting sugars, um, will cause a large insulin spike, which is 
kind of what we should be trying to avoid. If you're constantly doing that throughout the day, there's a high likelihood that over time, you're going to create an issue for yourself in terms of uh, creating insulin, what we call insulin resistance. So, um, and you do this for long enough and you end up uh, potentially um, with what's called diabetes, right? Yeah. And there are some estimates that upwards of 80% of North Americans have some type of insulin resistance. That is really, really scary, right? They're basically somewhere along the way towards developing adult onset diabetes, which is effectively the point where you've been producing so much insulin that your, your tissues aren't responding to that insulin, and then your body just stops producing insulin altogether. Right. Or, well, or to some to some level of lack of production, right? Um, it, it's just, your insulin isn't functioning properly, right? Right. So then, when we when we you know let's let's go the whole day, right? So you start your 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 coffee off with you know a big boost of sugar, and then you're also pairing that with you know a, a fairly high carb, high sugar breakfast. So even in terms of good, better, best, maybe you're not going out to, you know, McDonald's and getting an, an egg McMuffin, but you're having a big bowl of oats with fruit on top and, you know, sprinkled with a little bit of maple syrup or honey to sweeten it up a little bit. And then you've got your coffee on top of this. And then let's pair in, you know, snacking throughout the day um, and adding in again, uh, these, these not necessarily even highly palatable, but high sugar, high carb foods, you can almost expect that you are going to crave carbs and crave sugar throughout the entire day when that's the way that you start, start your meal for the day, right? There's so many factors th to be unpacked there, including what you're doing to your energy metabolism. I mean, oh, yeah. if you're having those highs and lows throughout the day. Uh, I mean, listen, I just want to be ultra clear. To have a little bit of a, uh, you know, mid-afternoon slump, I think that's, if you're working hard all day. You're human. But, yeah, but to feel those, uh, particularly, you know, when individuals start to describe the, the emotional waves too, right? Mm -hmm. Due to lack of control over blood sugar and, and all of these things. Um, this is a great sign of potential you know, uh, uh, blood sugar issues, insulin issues, the way you're able to metabolize. We call this metabolic flexibility. So having the ability to switch from a fed state to a fasted state, right? Um, and, and not have those huge waves or to, to readily be able to switch between fuel sources without having these peaks and valleys in energy. Um, and most people, unfortunately, uh, the way they overcome that in their day-to-day -day life is just by constantly eating right and right. constantly eating these uh and it becomes very apparent if they ever have to go for a period of time without food then then things get really uh really scary right yeah um, so it's a great question to ask yourself you know like um do i feel and i mean we we consume these foods for tons of different reasons which is a whole other um a whole other live but um, you know, do, do you get that feeling in the afternoon where you, your energy is crashing and the first thing that comes to your mind is I need a carb or I need a sugar or I need an energy boost to get through the rest of my afternoon. And, um, you know, that's a really great place to start because it doesn't have to be this way. And I can tell you personally from changing my diet and, in terms of um, the foods that I eat at what specific times to go with the flow of my hormones. And, you know, uh, many of our clients, some of which are, are tuning in right now, um, when they change that first meal, when that first meal effect went to having a breakfast that's, uh, see, yeah, see, Alana, that definitely used to be me. So when they change to having a breakfast that's, you know, higher in vegetables, um, medium, medium to high protein and a good healthy fat source. We're not saying it's easy, but if you were to start trying to do that first thing in the morning, you're going to find that you're going to be less hungry. You're going to have less energy crashes, less sugar cravings. And again, we're not demonizing carbs. We're not demonizing sugar, but there is a specific time in a specific place um, where your body is going to use um, those those calories more efficiently, and you're going to find that you're able to maintain a leaner 
physique in a healthier body with more balanced hormones. It is possible. And the other thing I would really encourage you as well, and I mean, you guys know that I'm a, I'm a big protector of my environment, um, you know, not walking around with all this willpower, putting myself up on a pedestal. It's if you have really bad sugar cravings, why are you bringing it into the house? Don't do that to yourself. Um, you know, we think, okay, I'm bringing this in for the kids or I'm going to save it for the weekend and I'll just put it in the cupboard and I'm not going to think about it. If you have an addiction to sugar, if you have an addiction to carbs or alcohol or anything like that, don't keep it in the house because you're making it so easy for yourself to go to it later in the afternoon when your motivation is lower and you're seeking that dopamine hit and we're still trying to break sometimes decades worth of habits of going to these foods for comfort, for energy. So just, just, just don't do it to yourself. Leave it out of the house. Put your blinders on when you go to the grocery store. Get out. <laughs> buy, buy the foods that you need. Prep them and have them readily available on hand to help you start to get on the other side of these sugar cravings. This is where things become interesting because we talk a lot about the science in the program and uh, you know, I've had many conversations because listen, you can find studies to show this, that I could pull 20 studies to show you whatever you want right now. And right. then we sit here and have a meaningful discussion about this. That's fine. I, I love doing that stuff and it's very interesting to me, but you just said something really interesting about uh, now the individual, Mm -hmm. This is where the program becomes so useful. This is where it becomes more about the psychology behind your nutrition and your right. relationship with food, how you view yourself and these things. Because, yeah, it's one thing, you know, I've heard other people saying, avoid this part of the grocery store or avoid that part of the grocery store. But what happens when you can't avoid? What happens right. when you've had a poor night's sleep and you've had a stressful day at work and someone said something to you that you didn't like and all of these things? During those times, there you have a high likelihood during those stressed moments to reach for the things that aren't going to serve you. Absolutely. Right? This is where the 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 mindset component of the of our, our what we do becomes so powerful right building new habits creating identity based goals working on your paradigm of self working on your paradigm of food creating awareness and understanding why you're doing certain things that you didn't even realize that you were doing and that's so powerful when people go and i had no idea i was doing that yeah. right because you want to suppress that. Uh, but, you know, I think it's super important to protect your environment is so critically important. That, I think that's a great first starting point for someone. And this is the, this is the, the Costco conundrum, right? Well, I want to go to Costco. Yeah, I'm going to go to Costco to buy the big bag of M&Ms because it's way cheaper than buying the little bag of M&Ms. I'm going to say, don't do that. Pay a little more, buy the smallest bag you can, finish that bag, and you're done. Hello. This is how this is how we control, right? We don't we don't uh, um, deprive, right? No. But we use certain principles that are going to work in your favor because this should not feel like hard work deprivation. Your diet shouldn't be stressing you out. Right. Right. And, Absolutely. Hey, yeah. just had a conversation with one of our graduates. She sent me updated pictures, mind blown. She's like, awesome. it just keeps getting better after 90 days. And the reason why this one is so special to me is because there were a lot of issues around food. It, we, it brought up a lot of vulnerabilities in the program that we had to work through. There was, it was a very sensitive, food has always been a very sensitive issue in these right. cases. If right. you don't work through those issues, we can tell you what to eat. Will you do it? But more importantly, will you do it for long term? Right. Right. And will, you, and will you love it? That's the thing. You know, our graduates coming out of the program and saying, 
you know, I, I celebrated an anniversary or a birthday and, and we really went kind of nuts. And I can't tell you how much I was looking forward to getting back to my process because I now know how good it feels to be on the other side of this thing. And next time I have a planned indulgence, I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. And that's the thing. There are lessons to be learned after the 90 days. And what I think is a really important thing to leave people with is you are not stuck with the hand you were dealt. Okay. So we hear this all the time. And again, this is a big part of our, our program in terms of the identity based goals and the changing your mindset. Because like Coach DeVore said, we can give you the meal plan template. You can, you can do all the things. But if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, instead of truly falling in love with the process and truly starting to shift the way that you see yourself and what you're capable of, none of it is going to stick long term. And this has mm -hmm. to be long term. You've spent enough time looking at yourself in a negative light and it's time to start building that confidence and proving to yourself that you truly can become the best version of you. So if you're watching this and this is resonating with you in terms of you're saying to yourself, I am the person that is addicted to sugar. I am the person that can't live without carbohydrates, which we're not going to ask you to do anyway. Um, I am the person that because of my upbringing, um, you know, I was taught to eat a certain way and I don't know or don't know, don't know how to eat any differently. And that scares me. Um, and, you know, again, there's there's a whole reason behind that that we've discussed before the the fear of failure, the fear of success, all of that. But just know that there is a way. I mean, we've had so many members go through this program and myself included who have had very, very negative relationships with food um, and really use these high sugar, highly palatable foods um, as, as comfort or like we said, as energy or, you know, we're really holding onto them tightly and we don't want to let them go, but you're not stuck. Okay. So if you're feeling stuck, this is the best time for you to reach out. Um, we have another program starting on Saturday. So this Saturday, uh, June 26th. And a huge part of our program is helping you to finally break through these cravings. Um, we're not saying that it's going to be easy, but it is quite simple in theory. We're going to give you all the tools. We're going to give you all the support. Don't settle with feeling like you were dealt this hand and you can't get over it. Trust, trust us when we say trust our, trust our graduates and people going through the program that it is more than possible, um, no matter where you are in your life. Absolutely. And I think the first step, like you said, coach, is acknowledging where you're at right now. Absolutely. And I'm just going to say it. It's okay to reach out to someone for help. Yeah. Right? I, there's right. a lot of individuals who say, well, I want to do this on my own. I used to have that mindset. I used to have that mentality until I got my first coach. And then I realized, why would you spend months, weeks, months, days, years, whatever, trying to figure this out on your own, find someone who's done this and is really good at, find someone who's done what you want to accomplish and, and find someone that's helped others accomplish it too with success. Right. And then partner with them so that you can get there quicker and and really avoid the pitfalls um that's the power of coaching this is why i all we all have coaches coaches have coaches because right. they believe in it it would be like for example uh if i didn't have a coach it would uh, the way i think about it is going to the dentist and being like hey who's your dentist and they're like oh, i don't go to dentists they're they're crazy people <laughs> like you would never hear that right? yeah coaches need coaches People need coaches. If you want to get there quickly, if you want to get there and have faith that the process you're doing is going to work, find someone that's done it. That's yeah. it. That's what yeah. we're that's what we're here for, right? And we can tell you with conviction, there there isn't a program out there like ours, even in terms of our theme today. Um, you know, we, we've all been in the industry for a very long time and I have yet to come across something in my career that is actually teaching people 
to eat um, in harmony with their hormones uh, with, without asking you to cut anything out of your diet, except, you know, with the exception of, of a few things that are just shouldn't be, you know, they're not meant for human consumption. Uh, and then adding in the uh, helping you to create the habits that are going to stick with you long term so that when you get these awesome results, like Coach DeVore said, when we get these after, after, after photos, it's just, this is just who I am now. And watch where I'm going to be at the end of this month. Watch where I'm going to be at the end of this year. Watch where I'm going to be in five years. This isn't the, oh, join another program where, you know, yeah, you lose some weight and then inevitably all your old habits are going to sneak back in. That's the importance of the habits as well as the education, the empowerment and the support from the team. So it is very, very, very different. And, you know, we, we, you know, we're, we're seeking to do that because who signs up for a program that has a 97% failure rate, right? And that's, yeah, you nailed that's it. it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, super, super appreciate you saying that, uh, Nat. So she said, love these talks, coaches. They're always incredibly on point. So appreciate it. This program is a complete game changer. Love it. I am a lifer now. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate that. Nat just got uh, incredible results, um, which I'm going to share actually later today. But uh, she lost 13 pounds on our 21 day uh, fat loss program, which is pretty pretty spectacular. Wow. Uh, Blown wow. away. Congratulations. Blown away that. Oh man, that's a, that's unbelievable. I know. I know. Yeah. Right? That that's inflammation in the body. That gives me the chills. That lights yeah. me up. Wow. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Incredible. And Holly, thank you for your comment there as well. So she said, profit over human health is the scariest idea that affects the health world and big pharma, for example, it's sad that health is second. You're absolutely right. And we really appreciate you tuning in today, guys, and, uh, you know, being being a part of our our talks. It's uh, it's so nice to have people from our, our community tuning yeah. in and, and sharing their experience so that we can help more people. Appreciate you guys. So next cohort kicks off this Saturday. And listen, if you're listening to this, you don't need literally don't prepare anything. You nope. could sign up Saturday morning if you wanted to, and you'd hit the ground running. So um, just send us a note. Let us know if you're interested. We'll share with you the details of the program. There's never any obligation. Just go to our website, and, and uh, you can book a free call with any of our incredible coaches, the most passionate people there are, um, and, and we'll get you rolling. We'll get you started. It literally can change your life in 90 days. I truly do believe that because I've heard that from so many of our members and I appreciate you guys, all, all of you guys that are watching. This is incredible. Yeah. That was good. Awesome. Let's incredible. Thanks, Coach. Cravings. <laughs> appreciate you. Have a great day, everyone. I hope you guys you just absolutely smash the day today. Incredible. Yeah, smash it. Smash Not your it. mug bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Bye.